We had the Face of the Revolution ladder match qualifier. Yes, Keith Lee is noted, faced Isaiah Cassidy. And, dude, the very first move he did was he build this guy, like, I mean, so high and so far. It was almost like he was going over to the post of the floor. And this crowd just went crazy. And he is very big, and he does need to lose some weight. But this dude got himself over in this match. Well, I, I mean, he, he's very charismatic, and Isaiah was tremendous. I mean, I, th- that big hip toss, that was Isaiah. Well, know? to a degree. I mean, no one can jump that high. I mean, it was, he it can. was the two of them. Well, it's the two of them, but he can jump. Well, he That's can like, jump, but he can't jump 10 feet in the air. He literally was 10 feet in the air. He was jumping, though. I mean, it was, Well, of it, course, he. everyone jumps on a beal, but you still need some dude to throw you an extra five feet in the air. Yeah, it was That broken. was a two-man job right there. Yeah. But it was an incredible bump, and Isaiah but Cassidy Isaiah, was, Isaiah worked around him really well, though. Well, he took a tremendous beating, is what he took, and uh, the fans, like, they were totally into these power moves. They were totally in all these spots. And uh, he hit his ground zero and got the pin. And uh, afterwards, Private Party uh, tried to take him out, but uh, they both went for a dive. He grabbed them both. He powerbombed Quinn onto Isaiah Cassidy, then powerbombed him again onto the apron and left him for dead. I mean, one match, this guy was more over here than I think he ever was on Raw. I mean, oh, way more. By like way more. miles and miles. Way more, way more. He was yeah, more well- over with the Beal. Yeah. He was more over with the leapfrog, and it wasn't even a good leapfrog. Yeah, but, but it's you like, know. the thing is, is like, the, the you know, they let him look impressive. Yeah. With they WWE. told him to go out and be Keith Lee, yeah. as opposed to the other place they wanted him to go out and be Bearcat. Well, they didn't want him to be Bearcat. I mean, he just, they wanted him to wrestle a certain way. Um, yeah, a way to not get over. Yeah, exactly. I mean, take, it's take just away- that hard. Yeah, well, it is when you're dealing with people from the 80s and you're trying, like, you know, like, I I sometimes talk to wrestling people from the 80s and it's it really is that hard, you know, because, you know, because they just think it's all wrong. He's 320 pounds. A 320 pound guy should not be doing this stuff because a 320 pound guy should not be doing something. But that's how he got over on the independents. Ah, oh, that's the independence. That doesn't work in, in real life. That's fake Well, life. you know, in fact, it did work here in real life on national television in front of a packed crowd. It worked. And well, you know what? It would have worked on Raw, too. Of course it would have. But here's the thing, too. It's like he was probably, what, 20 pounds, 30 pounds lighter on Raw? It would have worked even better. He yeah. could have moved even better. And he didn't do anything. And plus, didn't they, like, debut him by, like, um, having him, like, look like unimpressive and selling too much at first yeah he went like eight minutes with ziggler or something right and then he lost to randy orton and everything right away yeah it's like he ain't put this way he ain't losing to who's their equivalent to randy orton who is their equivalent to randy orton um jericho moxley i don't know um i think maybe they don't have one but i mean like he put this way keith lee is not going to get pinned in his second or his third or his fourth TV match, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I think he's going to do, I mean, even if he doesn't drop the weight, I think he's going to do much, much better. Well, I mean, he is, but, you know, he's, um, you know, um, plus, you know, again, coming off all that stuff that he had, um, he, he really needs to drop weight. I mean, it's just... Um, for just for his health, um, because he was really big up there. I mean, like when he came out, it was like this was a noticeable difference from the Keith Lee that I saw on Raw, let alone the Keith Lee that I saw on the Indies, who's still like a three. It was a three hundred twenty pound guy. I think they said he was three forty eight. I mean, I know those numbers are all made up, but but you know he looked every bit of twenty five thirty pounds heavier than uh, than I recall him being. And at thirty seven, that's not a good thing. But um, if he gets the weight down um, and he's got enough stamina to go, um, they've got so many guys who can make him look good and he can make himself look good and he can be a big, big star. And uh, the people want him to be, that's for sure. I mean, they, you know, the minute he came out, he didn't even, he was over before he even did the deal. As soon as they saw him, it was just like they wanted their surprise 
and they were promised a surprise, and they accepted that surprise. Like, I know people, oh, they're not going to accept Keith Lee. He's not a big enough star. They accepted that surprise. It was from the very beginning. There was no groaning. There was no, uh, you know. And then as soon as he, you know, did those couple of big moves at the beginning, he was, like, really over. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.